We have been told that there was a first election in France. And during this first election, it appeared that Le Pen has done very successfully, and Mr. Macron has done terribly awfully. Now, of course, there is a second election which is going to be done, and of course, that's the way the French system works. That's going to be done tomorrow, on Sunday, and so the question is, is going to be a change? Of course, a change is going to happen for sure, but is Mrs. Le Pen going to become the next leader of France? And of course, people are alarmed about this. They say, oh, well, she is, of course, the right winger, and so this is going to be very bad if she is going to run the country in France. And the press is blaming Mr. Macron for all of that because he asked for new elections, which weren't due yet, but he did anyhow because they did so poorly during the European election. And of course, now they are blaming him for their terrible disaster, the way they call it, insofar as Macron losing terribly high and Le Pen apparently making a lot of inroads. We also talk about terror threat in Germany. And this article we are referring to is stating that there is a terror threat towards American military bases in Europe and especially in Germany. But this morning they also said that there is actually concern that during the NATO meeting in Washington, which is going to take place from July 9 to 11, there might be a terror attack. Now, they have not necessarily explained as to why they feel that way, but it's definitely a concern. And of course, ISIS is the one which is being blamed. Now, the NATO meeting in Washington, I'll talk about that in a moment, is also considered by many as the break or make moment for Biden. And they feel if he is screwing that one up, that will be definitely the end of his career. Now we'll see how that all goes. But before I go into that, we are talking about Hungary. Mr. Orban now is the leader of the EU. He takes up the rotating presidency of the Council of the EU, has been doing this since July 1 for six months. Now many say, oh, that's not going to make any great difference because he is just a figurehead more or less. I've never believed that. And now what happens is, of course, the first thing he does, he visits Zelensky in Ukraine. After that, he visited Putin. And the whole idea seemed to be he's trying to be the mediator of stopping and ending the war between Ukraine and Russia. And so we'll see how this is going to transpire. We all have probably heard about, maybe we have seen it, the devastating debate between Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump. And, of course, the reaction was just awful, not just from the conservative side, also from the Democrat side, and especially from Europe. The New York Post editorial board, editorial board wrote on June 27, and I'll just give you a few excerpts, just a few excerpts. They say, Biden cannot survive this. It is political malpractice to let him continue to run for re-election. It is national malpractice to let him continue. During a second term, our president would continue to, to deteriorate, incapable of making proper decisions. That would be a disaster for the United States. As I said, this is pretty much echoed in Europe, pretty much echoed in Germany. They are extremely concerned about what is happening in the United States both insofar as Biden is concerned, also insofar as the second coming of Trump is concerned, as they phrased that. The Ron Paul Institute wrote on June 29, what a dark time in history, in US history. America seems to be going the way of the old Soviet Union with a decrepit leadership sitting atop a sea of corruption. Things could only get worse those who do not love the United States must be very happy now. Just to give a few excerpts, Piers Morgan from England wrote in The Sun, setting aside political partisanship, this was a desperately sad moment for America. 
He says, I wouldn't even trust Biden sitting in a rocking chair without falling down. How can we give him the responsibility to have his fingers anywhere near a nuclear trigger? And shame on the first lady, Jill Biden, Dr. Jill, the way she wants to be called, for not stepping in to save her husband from himself. And of course, she is being blamed quite a bit now from all kinds of angles as the one who is trying to push Mr. Biden in continuing to run for the presidency. We have several articles in there showing that not only Trump lied, as he probably did, but Mr. Biden did too. And so one article which was actually published by the New York Post talks, in, talks about that. One article which was published by a German publication talks about this, and they point out exactly all the lies he spread. But I wanted to talk about the European and their response. In The Guardian, we read that European politicians, already drowning in multiple crises of their own, were left shell-shocked and aghast at Joe Biden's performance. Aware that a second Trump term had drawn that much nearer, with all that this implies for the rise of populism in the continent, the future of NATO, Ukraine, the Middle East. The voices of despair came from across the mainstream political spectrum, interspersed with the call for Europe to prepare even more intensely for a Trump's second coming. And Another article in Politico, which was published in collaboration with Die Welt, actually yesterday, it talks about secret ideas, secret talks about making Europe nuclear, not just France and the UK, without the United States. And I am convinced that that is going on, and they are definitely preparing for such an event. Now, we feel that, prophetically speaking, that's important, because ultimately Europe will be a nuclear power, and they will use those nuclear weapons in an attack against the United States and the United Kingdom. Bill Online, a German paper, mass tabloid, stated that Biden should abdicate. There's no, no way that he should finish or continue it says, concerns about the United States have not diminished after the TV debate, but now it's really big. But the Welt, another German paper, wrote this. The TV duel, or duel, whatever, was a disaster for the U.S. president and a bad evening for many in the West. The media has too often been blind in glorifying Joe Biden and blind with anger when it comes to Donald Trump. This is now taking its toll. So they also are realizing the fact that the media, and the United States in particular, has tried to cloud the issue, tried to protect Biden, tried to say, oh, well, he's not really all that bad when it comes to his mental abilities. It's, it's just all manufactured. And now it's clear it wasn't manufactured. It was clear from the outset, actually. And they realize that in Europe, and they are saying now, boys, this is bad. This is bad. We have to do something. But here is the problem. The problem is, let's be aware of what people are wishing and what the outcome might be. Deutsche Welle wrote on July 5 that the Germans, for instance, neither like Trump nor Biden. And 67% believe that America's democracy is in danger already right now, not even talking about when the next president is elected. Already now, President Biden is a little bit more popular in Germany, but it's only 28% like him, 9% uh, like Trump. The majority are not convinced by either one. And then, of course, the same goes for Germany also. Almost 80% of the Germans are disappointed with the work of the coalition government. And just today I was reading they are demanding new elections in Germany. But Olaf Scholz is not going to do it. Mr. Biden is saying he's not going to abdicate or go down. I mean, let's, uh, let's say he not, not even abdicated as a president, but he doesn't even want to drop out of the race. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So 40% of the people in Germany say they are and feel unsafe in public spaces. 40%. Now, I saw a video today, this morning, 
of an incident in the northern part of California, I believe. It lasted for 40 minutes. I mean, the video wasn't 40 minutes long, but they said it lasted for 40 minutes. You see how a group of people ransacked a 7-Eleven store, and they destroyed everything. They took everything they could possibly take. And I'm sitting there thinking, what happened to the police? Where was the police in all of this? Nothing. For 40 minutes, it was going on. No police showed up. Mr. Newsom was out there campaigning for Biden someplace else. This is the kind of world we are living in. Crime is just rampant here, and it's rampant over there in Germany. It's rampant in Europe. Where will you look? Not to forget Canada. So I said people should be very much aware what they are wishing, because some now are saying, oh, well, if Biden steps down, the most logical person to take his place would be Kamala Harris. Now, some have speculated it could be Michelle Obama, but I found some statements she made very interesting. They echoed pretty much what Tom's daughter recently said when she was interviewed. She said, no, politics is so dark, I don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. So dark. And I thought she's right, because it is the prince of darkness who is in charge of politics. And politics is this absolute field where he is doing the most damage. But Michelle Obama almost said the same thing. She said, no, I don't want to get involved in this. I'm not going to get involved in this. And even though she didn't use the word dark, it came very close to that. So they are seeing something which most people in America don't see. So it appears to be that, that Michelle Obama is not going to run not going to take that challenge unless she changes her mind, but as of now, she's not. So Kamala Harris is being propagated now by the Democrats as the one. Now, the New York Post wrote on July 4, after three and a half years of being lukewarm on Kamala Harris, Democrats are suddenly hot, hot, hot for the vice president. The party is in full panic mode. Dems are now desperately trying to make Kamala happen. But the article goes on to say, most of his speeches bring to mind the principal in Billy Madison, who in his candid assessment of Adam Sandler's character says, at no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Very famous statement was applied here by the New York Post to Kamala Harris' speeches. And then it goes on to say, and yet the Dems want to sell her as their big hope. Let's be honest, in a debate, cackling Kamala will be shredded by Trump, a man who has about 10 words in his lexicon, but deploys them effectively, if not crudely. Now, Mr. Biden, of course, gave an interview, as we probably are aware of, it was yesterday, and he spoke to ABC's George Stephanopoulos. Now, in this interview, even many Democrats say it was a little bit better than debate, but by far not enough to help people having any confidence in him anymore. Uh, he said that he completely denied the possibility, ruled it out, that he would step down. He said the only way would be if the Lord Almighty would come out to tell me so, then I might, but the Lord Almighty doesn't come down. So he is definitely not willing to step down. But even, as I said, left-wing outlets, many of those, are now concluding that Biden is in complete denial. In addition, several Democrats on Capitol Hill expressed concern after the interview and repeated their call for Biden to step aside. Now, think about it. If that is even possible, that he would voluntarily step aside and open up the way for another Democrat challenger, who could that possibly be? I mean, the timing is such that it might be very difficult to begin with. Kamala Harris, in the view of most, would be even a greater disaster than 
Mr. Biden. And then they are talking about the governor of California, but they feel there is no chance that he could win against Trump. So Trump, of course, does everything he possibly can to make life miserable for him. And of course, to, to help raising the concern, especially the Europeans have, that he is out there to destroy American democracy. I'm not even talking about the strange video, you might have seen it, where he was in a golf car and he talked to somebody and uh, talked about the debate using all kinds of foul language. But he keeps talking about retribution. He's talking about retribution and people are saying, oh, all he means is success. No, he's not. He is talking about a lot more than just success. He's talking about revenge. He's talking about revenge can sometimes be justified. He also stated, and I quote, I will appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States. Joe Biden, the entire Biden crime family, all others involved with the destruction of our elections, borders, and country itself. So he puts the world already on notice what he's going to do, what he intends to do. Also, he posted two posts, actually. It wasn't his posts, but these were posts which were done by others, but he put it on his social network, according to which all kinds of people were supposed to be prosecuted, including Mr. Biden, Mrs. Harris, Mr. Pence, Mr. Schumer, Mr. McConnell, and, of course, Mrs. Cheney, and she was supposed to be prosecuted through a military tribunal, which would mean she would not have even a right to independent counsel. Now, for him to put that down, whether it is really his intention to do so or whether he is just putting it down for publicity's sake, is just putting oil in the fire of those who are saying he's out there to destroy not just democracy, he's out there to destroy our relationship, our relationship I'm talking about between Europe in particular and the United States. Now we know that's going to happen. We know the relationship between the United States and Europe will deteriorate. And I frankly don't care anymore whether it's going to be Biden or Trump or somebody else, because it doesn't matter. See, in the preordained scenario of God, it's already clear that's what's going to happen. And what we are seeing right now is just bringing this about. I like to conclude by saying that the concept that being involved in politics is just a darkness which we are embracing is very true. I've said that and talked about this quite a bit. And uh, I was impressed by those I quoted earlier who seemed to be saying and sensing the same thing. And these were the ones who were involved in politics and who actually saw firsthand what was going on. Melania Trump actually said the same thing in so many words. She said, well, if my husband should win, I will not get involved that much any longer as a first lady. Now, Dr. Jill Biden may want to think about that. She wants to really push her husband in that direction. It's just very irresponsible to do so. And uh, Mr. Biden, I mean, for everything we have seen, is just not able, it's not capable of running this country. Even after the debate, he managed to make some outlandish statements. And I could list quite a few. I just want to leave you with that one. He said, I am the first black woman who served for a black president. Now, that's heavy, as Michael Fox would have said in Back to the Future. That's heavy. Biden was the first black woman who served for a black president. I mean, you cannot possibly even try to justify that just was just a slip of the tongue. There's obviously a lot more behind it.